Well, good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Forest Presbyterian Church. We're living God's heart, hands, and voice. It is good to see all of you here this morning. If you're visiting with us on uh, Facebook or YouTube, uh, we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are, we're glad that you're here this morning. Uh, today is uh, a, an important day uh, for, for me uh, in that this is uh, the, I've, there's been a lot of confusion about this. Some, some have thought I've, I've had my medical procedure this week already. Some are wondering when it's going to happen. It's happening tomorrow. Uh, so please do uh, keep me uh, in your prayers. I'm having a, an ablation for my heart tomorrow, so do, do pray for me. Uh, that should be a, a, a minor thing, but, uh, but do, do keep me in your prayers for that. Um, but we have a lot going on in the, in the church, and the church is going to keep uh, going. I'm not going to be here next week, so don't be concerned about that either, uh, because I'm going to try to follow the doctor's instructions of not being. Uh, Joanne Scott told me I would be up in, in a day uh, running around. I know the doctors don't want me doing that. Um, so uh, somewhere between there uh, will, is what I'm going to do, and, and, um, and so next Sunday uh, we will have uh, Jen Brothers here, here preaching, so, so do look forward to her, her preaching uh, here. But we have, again, we have a lot going on, so uh, you want to start out, Laura? Good morning. I'm Laura Collier from Missions. The angel tree is up in the commons. Um, if you take an angel, it is due back December the 11th, wrapped or in gift bags. Make sure you attach your angel to the package. Also, if you take an angel, grab a candy cane as a thank you for taking an angel. Um, the tree is filling its age, so it is currently thumbtacked by a string to the wall, so just be very careful <laughs> that it doesn't tip over, and then you get all the angels. <laughs> um, Bedford Christian Ministry is also in need of um, canned food for children. That would be like ravioli, canned ravioli, canned spaghetti. It doesn't have to be name brand. I think Kroger's has these cans of food for around 89 cents each. So if you feel like you can grab a few of those, bring those back to church. Also, as the weather changes, it's getting colder. If you can spare from your closets, use coats, hats, gloves for adults and children. Thank you. And good morning. This is, I'm John Farrell, and I hang out here running the technical stuff along with uh, a few other people. And just so you know, we have three people back here, right? T today we've got Billy running the slides. We've got Scott running the soundboard, and I'm doing the streaming. When it comes Christmas time, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, do you know how many people I have back here? One. I could use some help. So, well, don't talk to me after today's service because I got to skip out for some reason. Uh, so get a hold of me before next week's service. You can email me. You can talk to the church. They'll provide my information. And hopefully we will get a few more people back in the booth on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Thanks. John is humble. He's leaving today on his sleigh. <laughs> uh, if you uh, also, is there anybody else today? No? Okay. Um, today, today is uh, in the process of decorating the church. That is coming up, um, and that is coming up on the 26th. So this year, the schedule for Advent is earlier than, than most years, uh, so do get that onto your calendar to be here on the 26th uh, to help set up the church. Uh, God has called us here to worship. As David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us worship God, uh, beginning this morning with our prelude. <laughs>
Good morning. Please stand if you are comfortable for you to do so and join me in the call to worship. Surely God is our salvation. We will trust and we will not be afraid. For the Lord God is our strength and our might. God has become our salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for God has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Let us pray. Ever-living God, you inscribe our names in your book of life so that we may share in the first fruits of salvation. Grant that we may acknowledge Christ as our Redeemer and trusting in him, be confident that none of your own will be lost or forgotten. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing hymn number 463, How Firm a Foundation. You may be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin to God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Majestic creator, we fail to believe we carry your image, and we fail to behave as those who belong to you. Mighty Savior, we turn from your path of sacrificial love, and we turn toward our personal preferences. Merciful Spirit, we forget your call to righteousness, and we forget our need of you. In our sinfulness triune, we seek now your forgiveness, praying that you will relieve the burden of our regrets by the power 
of your patient's love. The mercy of Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You may the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please uh, remain standing as we sing hymn number 275, The Mighty Fortress is Our God.
You may be seated. The reason I'm laughing is because in my directions it said Malachi 4, 1 through 2a. And my pew bubble did not have a 2a, nor a 2b. So I, I did what I was told was 2a, and I see that it's all of 2. So when I stop, or if I can read through my scratching, I'll continue. So sorry about that. Um, let's see. Now I've lost my place. All right, here we go. The scripture reading for today is Malachi 4, 1 through 2. A, found on page 842 in your pew Bible. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who rev revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. This is the word of the Lord.
Now I'd ask the uh, children to come forward for their special time. Plenty of room, plenty of room. Okay, so do you guys know what uh, holiday is coming up? Because this, for me, is the Sunday that goes with that Christmas. Wow. Okay, well, we could go there if you want to. I mean, I'm up for that. I'm up for that. But Thanksgiving, that's right. Thanksgiving's coming next. And so since I'm not going to be doing the children's sermon next Sunday, this is my Thanksgiving Sunday. Is that cool? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so uh, what are you thankful for? You're thankful for God? Okay, good one. Prodigy. Prodigy, what is that? If it, if, does it have to, a, a math game? Cool. I'm thankful for the flowers. You're thankful for the flowers. Yeah, that's a good thing to be thankful for. Yeah. Your family and friends? Yeah. That's a good thing to be thankful for. You thankful for something? You don't know? Yeah. How about you? Your family, that's good, that's good, yeah. Yeah, so I am, thank you know what I'm thankful for? What? For all of you. I'm thankful for all of you and for everybody out there and for God. And I'm thankful for everybody's prayers this week and for how much you guys care. So this is, this is a good week for me and it's a good week uh, for you guys to be thankful. So we can take these next two weeks and be thankful this whole time, right? Can you think of something you can be thankful for every day? Something different every day? Your mom? Yeah, yeah. So you can, you can use her on another day because you already used one thing, so you can use her again. Okay, what? I'm thankful for Prodigy every day. You're thankful for Prodigy every day? I bet you are. I bet you are. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, just, I'm just guessing, but based on what I've heard from up here, you're thankful for Pokemon every day too. Yeah. Right? See, I tell you, got a Pokemon shirt on. I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. This is what we really want to talk about, isn't it? Okay, but let's be thankful first, and then you guys can go go downstairs and you can talk about all the different Pokemon stuff, right? Okay. Well, let's 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 pray. Lord God, help us to be thankful and to remember that all good gifts come from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please turn with me to Luke uh, chapter 21. And Edie, you read exactly the right verses. Exactly the right verses. Well, turn with me to, to Matthew 21, uh, I mean Luke 21, verse 5. Let's pray as we approach God's word this morning. Lord God, we thank you for your word today and that you speak to us through your Holy Spirit and through the words of Scripture. Reveal to us many things as we move forward in life, as we wait upon you, but also celebrate your arrival. In Jesus' name, amen. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. 
But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. How many of you have a date that is coming up in your future that you are either looking forward to or dreading? Have you heard mine? Yes, you probably have. Everybody's got one, right? We all have one. And maybe your day earlier was earlier this week on Tuesday. And that came and went, didn't it? How much different is it then when there is a date that is ahead that you don't know? A date that is in the future that you haven't gotten a certain date. When you have a date and you know what's coming up, you behave accordingly to that date. But we don't always know the future in that way. Don't we all want to know what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen tomorrow? I think that's why financial news channels exist and why there are political pundits and there are folks on there who talk about vague future connections, and we want to know what's certain to happen. But certain parts of the future are uncertain. The details of our lives for us are not mapped out from day to day. On the one hand, each of us has to participate to work with God, to work with the Holy Spirit to make things happen in life. We are participants in our future. We are making our future through the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, our spiritual future is certain. That God knows. And God never fails us and never leaves us alone. That is the world that we live in. That is the time that we live in in our lives. And God has called us to make the most of every moment that we have of every day through the Holy Spirit, with the time that we have and with the opportunities that we have in life. Now, this is a text today about prophecy. It is a text when Jesus is in his role as prophet telling the future. Now, the Old Testament in Deuteronomy talks about prophecy and prophets and how do you know when a prophet is telling, uh, how do you know when a prophet is true? when you are with a genuine prophet? Well, that is when the prophet tells the truth. And how do you know the prophet is telling the truth when what that prophet says comes true? For Jesus and for his generation, this was the destruction of the temple that was being predicted. Jesus is telling them of the destruction of this building that they cannot even imagine being gone. They cannot imagine that this structure would not be here. But it was in God's plan, it was in the future, that it would be thrown down. That all of those massive stones, all of the beautiful inlays that were made in the temple would be torn apart and destroyed by the emperor Titus. There are buildings and structures in our own day that I could not imagine not being around that are not around or that one day will not be around. One day I went as a young person into the top floor of the World Trade Center and got up against the glass and looked down a hundred stories to the ground. To me, even being behind glass was terrifying to see down into the city in that way. It wasn't meant for human beings to be up that high above the city. You can imagine the people that built it. But I never could have imagined from that spot that those buildings would be gone one day. And here we are 20 years from that moment. 
For the disciples, if they lived long enough, that this amount of time, 20 years, would be half as long as what they would know before the temple is thrown down. They would have to believe for another 10 years or so, almost 20, before this would happen. It would be between 30 and 69, 70 A.D., sometime around there. If they lived long enough, they would see if Jesus' prophecy was true, and it was. We live in an age of false prophets. Lots of people are out there telling lies about the future. Lots of people out there are telling lies and making money off of it or have some other reason to tell their lies about the future, to be false prophets, to deceive. Do not believe them. Jesus tells us don't believe them. Instead, believe in Christ's prophecy. Instead, believe what the scriptures say, not what some person says. Even as Jesus said, he doesn't know the day of the end. But the Son doesn't know, the Father knows, but the Son doesn't know. So we must live in this unexpected era of the future. For instance, don't believe people if they substitute something other uh, for the greatest of importance in life other than Jesus. Or worse, substitute themselves. True to the message, what we do as Christians is point beyond ourselves to Jesus. That is all that we are called to do as Christians. All other prophets are false. All other predictions are false. Christ will return. We don't know when. Behave accordingly. Also, beware of those who give you specific dates for things to occur, unless they are your cardiologist or someone else. For those who are saying something specific about Jesus, Jesus did not give his disciples specific dates for the end of the temple. Can you imagine the behavior of people around those dates if they knew that was coming? Because that was not the purpose of Jesus' prophecy. The purpose of Jesus' prophecy that day was to tell them that they needed to live and act and behave a certain way. The destruction of the temple by Titus was also going to usher in, uh, in, its, in the days leading up to that, a time when they would be the counterculture in Rome. When Christians would live a witness that might not always be in sync with the world around them. So some, if they knew a date, would drop what they were doing, would stop and just live a life of enjoyment, of hedonism. Or some would live uh, crazy uh, lives. But the point is, if they knew the date, if they had the date, they wouldn't behave as Christ wanted them to know and to live. Jesus wanted them to be prepared in the way that they lived and to be prepared in the way that they uh, defended themselves and spoke about him. We're about to celebrate the Advent season, and we think of the Advent season as the birth of the baby Jesus, as the season to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus. Uh, now, Talladega Nights and Will Ferrell's prayer in that movie tell us about uh, how much he loved to pray to the little baby Jesus in his family, in his NASCAR family. Uh, it is, Advent is not just about the baby Jesus. It is also about the return of Christ. It is about us preparing ourselves for the return of Jesus in our lives. On the one hand, we are preparing for the birth of Jesus to remember the beginning of the incarnation, to remember God with us, Emmanuel, but also to live in this age that God is still with us and that we prepare for Christ's return. So what are a couple of ways that we can live in response to knowing that this 
uh, prophecy of the end of our age, this apocalyptic era is upon us. You see, apocalypse means uncovering. It doesn't mean end of the world, it means uncovering. That something is revealed to us. Christ is not trying to cover up here, but to reveal. We also talk about eschatology, the end of time. But again, with the end of time is coming whether we want to stop it or make it happen faster. So we must behave accordingly to what Christ has taught us. First, we must wear our faith on our sleeves. Or maybe to be more accurate, we must wear our faith as we would wear our clothes, not ill-fitting or uncomfortable. But our faith must be as comfortable as the clothes that we wear for all to see of how we believe in Christ. Jesus prophesied an age where things would be very difficult for believers. That was his age and some places in our own age. But let's be clear, here in the United States, we have it pretty easy in our faith. But no matter the cultural situation around us, our goal is to live out our faith from day to day so that others may see it, so that others may know the hope that we have within us in Christ. The second is how Jesus says we must speak spontaneously for him. Many times when people talk about Christ, it is in some pre-prepared way that is not authentic to them and not authentic to their way of life and how Christ is engaged with them and how they are engaged with Christ. We must be ready to speak spontaneously for Jesus. Most of us will not be hauled into court over Christ, so you're probably going to be with friends, with family, with neighbors. Are you ready to talk about your faith in a way that doesn't seem weird? Are you you ready to speak about your faith in a way that lets your friends, your neighbors, know that you are a friend of Christ and that Christ is your friend? This is the way that Christ wanted us to defend ourselves. Not with pre-prepared answers, but with genuine, authentic answers that speak of our faith, of how we encounter Christ from day to day. Knowing the end, Jesus also doesn't want us to be afraid. Our souls are our true possession in this life. The things that we have, the possessions, the outward possessions we have, are in many ways an illusion. The only thing we leave this life with is our soul. The only thing we can take with us is our soul. Jesus wants his disciples to prepare themselves for that moment, to hold on to their souls to hold on to who they truly are in Christ. And this is the kind of endurance that he is hoping they will have. An inward endurance, a spiritual endurance, a faithful, trusting endurance in him. But Jesus talks about our soul here, but he also talks about our body. You see, our hope is in the resurrection. Our hope is in our bodies, too. Now, when I go to the barber shop, Jesus says your, a hair on your head is not going to be harmed here. Now, I go to the barber shop, and they put uh, the uh, smock on me on the front, and they cut my hair now. Uh, now, when the hair used to fall on me, it was blonde. And then it got to be a little darker. Uh, and now, every now and then, there's some gray that comes out. I mean, that's how I found out I had gray hair was not because I could see it, uh, but because it came out, right? Uh, But is my hair in the barbershop perishing when it is cut? No, my hair is not perishing. It's just being trimmed. 
But Jesus, when he talks about not a hair of your head will perish, he's not talking about a haircut or going bald or having something happen to your hair. When Jesus says that not a hair on your head will perish, he is talking about how also our bodies will be eternal. When we die, our bodies perish. Our bodies are perishing as we live. But one day the hope is that our souls and our bodies will be reunited in the resurrection and that they will be done so in Christ. Our real hope in life is in Christ. The Heidelberg Catechism, which is one of our confessions, says this, and usually with the catechisms and confessions, you can read the first sentence and know the point. And this is the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism to try to teach us about our faith. The Heidelberg Catechism's first question says, what is your only comfort in life and in death? The answer, that I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Today know that you belong life and in death to Jesus Christ. He possesses you, not the other way around. Use the scripture to go with you and walk through life and use Jesus to go with you and walk through life. I've only had one other surgery in my life, one other procedure where they had to, uh, to put me under. Uh, and that was uh, when I had my gallbladder taken out about 15 years ago. And they put you on, if you've, been, if you've had surgery, they put you on a cross-shaped uh, table. So they remind you of uh, what the process is here. And they, as they're uh, preparing you, and it was before this surgery, I started to get nervous only in the moment right before all this happened. Uh, right before all of it happened. And the text from the New Testament from Paul came to my mind. To live as Christ and to die is gain. When you look at your life in this way, you begin to see that everything that we have in life is a bonus. Because in death we belong to Christ, but in life we belong to Christ too. And that every moment we have, every moment that we share, every moment that we live belongs to him. And we must live that way as well. So take comfort in this life. Though the end is nigh, as we continuously say, the end is also joyous. Whether the end comes in our lifetimes or the end comes later, our joy, our hope is in the resurrection. Our joy and our hope is in our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, today, help us to live with your end in mind. That every day, every moment, everything that we have belongs to you. So that in our life, in our death, others may know that we belong to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please stand if it is comfortable for you to join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, God Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Christ has called us here not just to worship and give thanks, but also to lift up others in prayer. Let us begin uh, our prayers of the people. I will pray and then I will give you an opportunity to lift up prayers for those uh, in your own life and in our community. Let's pray. Lord God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would lift up prayers that we have today on our hearts and on our minds that we don't know the words to say. We ask that you would speak for us and through us and in us. We pray today for the sick and ask for healing. We pray for the hungry and ask that they might be fed. We pray for places in the world where there is violence and warfare and ask that there would be peace. We pray for those who are lonely today. And we pray for your hope. We pray for the nations today, that they would make peace with one another and study peace at your feet. We pray for our nation. And having had an election, we pray for unity and wisdom and justice. And we've brought many here today on our hearts and minds, and we lift them up to you now. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask that you would use each of us to fulfill these prayers and that we would all be your hands and voice and heart in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In gratitude in this season of thanksgiving, let us now give thanks with our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Lord God, we are so thankful for the many gifts and blessings you have in our lives. Through your providence, walk beside us each day. Show us the way and help us as we seek to follow you into the world and to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing hymn number 757. And now go into the world and be Christ's disciples. Follow him in this time and be his people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.